Hey guys, welcome to the first Mattia editorial podcast. Today we have Alexandra Guckel, news editor. Bella Myers, the Stampede YouTube editor. Marco Ivero, Spotlight Editor. Leland Pond, Sports Editor. And Brant Ord, Perspectives Editor. And in this episode, we'll be basically going through some of the most popular and controversial articles that have um, sparked conversations at Mattia. So first, we have September. Um, the dogs that inspect people's backpacks and lockers for drugs and other substances were actually introduced into the school. and. Um, through several interviews with the company that has the dogs and with several deans. Um, basically, the dogs are here just so that um, it encourages students to not bring certain substances to school and to stop using them. And they basically inspect all students and don't really offer distraction so that it's still a safe environment and students just know what's now right from wrong because now if they have substances, it's more likely that they'll get caught. Okay. Yeah, one of the other main things that happened in October was that um, one of the episodes of The Main was actually censored because um, in the episode, the people that produced The Main, um, they decided to do a restaurant review, and in that review there was a small clip that showed alcohol, and many of the administrators at Mattia thought that wasn't appropriate, so they decided that they would censor that episode, um, or they would, and they would basically take it down. So a lot of the people that produced that episode were upset about it because obviously they put a lot of time and effort into it and basically the episode wasn't, it was eventually put up, but they had to take out that section. So. Yeah, and Avni actually got an award for this one, uh, the Pacemaker Award. Mm -hmm. So yeah. good job, Wow, Avni. yeah, good job, Avni. So another thing that happened in November was um, that a group of students actually spoke out at a district board meeting about basically that the district doesn't meet um, compliance with the state law because um, stu like feminine students actually said that there's no feminine hygiene products in the bathrooms and that's actually an issue because Illinois state law actually requires that to be there because um, obviously there's so many other issues that go along with it and so students actually um, specifically Abby Malbon who um, was on staff she and a, a, many other students formed a group called Menstruators Action Network and they spoke out about how basically not having these products has affected them um, and they got many district administrators to turn heads about why this is a big issue yeah, that's really cool. I think that, um, and I think that, um, like, <laughs> that beep. Um, so I think that um, feminine hygiene products are like a topic that, because of newspaper, has been brought to light. Um, since normally it's not something that people like talk about at the lunch table or like talk about with friends or like, hey, we need feminine hygiene products. Like, no, like what? Like I think that because we covered it and because Abby started that um, that okay. network that it really brought something to Mattia that wouldn't have been brought otherwise. Yeah, and because we had, what, probably like 20 or 40 kids who came to the meeting? Um, yeah, there were many kids. That yeah. was insane because mm -hmm. just the fact how we can have such like a large amount of people who can stand for a specific topic or a specific issue, uh, we can definitely start to change people's and we've already seen that happening. Um, yeah, and this was like the first meeting of other meetings to follow, but um, in the first meeting, it was mainly students who spoke out, but then in the second one, they even had parents talk about how this was an issue, which really um, told the board that, you know, they really needed to do something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, Myra wrote uh, what I consider like one of the best stories of like the year. Um, the Aurora shooting happened. Uh, that uh, weekend, and she went out there, she covered it, she got interviews. It was honestly one of the best done stories of the entire year, and like, yeah, all the praise to my ref for writing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's just so like, because after like everything happening, um, <clears throat> like honestly with like the violence and the conflict going on right now, I loved how she kind of just hit close to home um, and kind of started to 
make it like something that every single student should kind of read. Yeah, props to Myra. So, so in March, I posted my second video, and it was about Mustang 30. And I kind of went around, and I gave um, students and teachers interviews um, speaking on what they thought about Mustang 30 and if it's going to be in the curriculum next year. And then I also compared it to um, 2000, not 2000, no. District 203's um, schedule and on Wednesdays how they have a late arrival. And um, I just kind of compared and contrasted um, either one of our schedules to see what students liked and teachers. I think for sports, especially in March, it was probably like the night of, like right when we got out for spring, spring break. break. Um, boys hockey, so it's the Wabanzi Matia hockey team. They headed to um, the state championships against Glenbard. Um, and that was very interesting. I don't know if you guys went, but um, <laughs> uh, Nate and I went and we co-wrote the article. And um, so basically they won four to three um, yeah, <laughs> and it's it's definitely it's definitely something that was very rewarding to kind of see because and witness. Um, after the last year, they had a really tough loss in because they had they just came up short um, along the lines. So this year, we can definitely see that they amped it up a little bit and kind of made sure that they wanted to be in the United Center and come back and take home the trophy, which they did. Um, and they had a new coach too, Mr. Dombro. Um, it was his first year as head coach, so it was pretty nice to kind of mm -hmm. have everything fall into place um, after everything. But it was honestly back and forth. Like, Glenbard was so, like, so insanely good. Um, it was just the fact of, I think, like just as time kind of stopped by um, and kind of like quickly trickled down to the minutes, um, it kind of just you know things happen and yeah I mean it there's nothing really much to say but it's just that they were the team worked really hard um, <clears throat> with a new transition and everything so it's a good type of like redemption and dominance definitely for the next season so yeah I definitely think um, sports this year was like really good and I know that there was a few new coaches oh. um, throughout the year yeah, um, yeah. Um, another thing in April was the Florida legislation law um, this was an article that I wrote um, Florida has a new art not article wow mm. okay Florida <laughs> has a new law that um, lets teachers voluntarily carry round guns, um, quote unquote, for protection for the students to um, steer away from school shootings. And I got um, some teachers interviewed for that. And I think we all can agree that, that was, that's not really a good idea. It's kind of a double negative. Um, I don't want to touch too much on it because it could, I don't know. It's kind of a controver like a super controversial thing with gun mm -hmm. laws and all this stuff. So. Go check out my article. <laughs> See for yourself. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Um, <laughs> it got three comments. So I guess that's good. <laughs> oh my God. So another, um, another article that went up in May was an article about the closing of the gender, gender neutral bathrooms. Um, or not, I shouldn't say closing, the restricted use of, because um, basically those bathrooms used to be open to anyone whenever they wanted to and now if they want to use those bathrooms they have to go through the main office or through the class offices and sign in and then also record what time they go in and what time they leave um, and this is actually a big issue for many of the students that we have in our school that um, basically don't have a specific gender or are transitioning or other students who just want like more privacy and now they feel as though they don't have that privacy that they had before. And it's also a larger issue because um, this used to be more free use and now it's so complicated to get into those bathrooms. So 
many students spoke out about it and had their opinions and the school has yet to change what they, that new, they've newly implements, yeah, implemented. Yeah, I was, I was reading um, the comments on that article and it honestly was like upsetting, like all the people that it was affecting because it, like, it doesn't necessarily affect me and I guess because of that, I wasn't really keeping in account how many other people it affected. So to like read all these like comments about it um, just kind of made me mad at Amatia. But yeah, I, think yeah. I don't want to like, say that. In the article, they even like interviewed like Danny Anderson, and basically he said that like um, they were like keeping track of how long they were in the bathroom. Yeah. They had to like check in and sign out, and that's yeah. like embarrassing of when you right. have to like use the bathroom. Like it's literally just the bathroom. Like why can't we just like manage it like a bathroom yeah. instead yeah. of being like oh I'm, I'm entering the bathroom at 7 3 a.m yeah, you know i have that? left the bathroom at 7 10 a.m because like yeah. has anyone ever asked like why do we need to know who signs and signs like i understand well like, one of the private, like, security yeah one of the main reasons that they decided to like restrict the use was since those bathrooms are more private than the general ones that are in locker banks or in the lunchroom um a lot of kids were actually misusing those and you know staying in there for a long time because since you enter you can enter from the hallway on the side and then exit from the hallway and no teachers are really monitoring that and so um since there that was the only bathroom that really was more like secluded like more like a trust right mm -hmm. um i guess i don't know We'll probably have to like figure out and iron out some of the things mm -hmm. um yeah. but like i do understand like yeah people would want some privacy and using these gender neutral bathrooms um but i think there's just more of a way for us to kind of have everyone agree on the policies instead of shifting it from one way to the other right mm -hmm. um so moving on a lighter note <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would love to talk about the badminton season that the girls had this year. It was an exceptional season, I would have to say so myself. Um, so the varsity team, they yet again headed to state. Um, their number one doubles placed sixth. Um, and I got a chance to talk with the head coach, he's now going to be the wrestling coach as well, so it's going to be interesting to see how he transitions from winter to spring, but um, I got a chance to talk with him, and um, to give you guys a little bit of a context, the varsity team finished 7-6 on the season, and then 2-2 two on two to the DVC, um, and I asked him what was so like important about like because they had such like a successful team, um, what was kind of like the strength and kind of the key to honing everything together and making sure that everyone's on the same page um, in something that they want? And he, his answer was basically about uh, how going to state and going to sectionals or winning a title is just the icing on the cake. What really matters is A, the players are having fun um, and B, everyone understands what they're doing and how are they going to get to a specific goal. Um, and, you know, we have those people on the team that aren't going to be focused on heading to state or heading to sectionals. And what I loved about this, his answer with this is how he makes every player feel valued. Um, and for those who don't really have an eye for going to a competitive level, um, he basically has this like metaphor of like iron sharps iron type of thing, where every single person on the team can help the people who are looking to go to state or the people who are not looking to go to state. We need players that can play each other and kind of build that competitiveness. And I think that's how, um, in his interpretation, that's how he kind of viewed as a successful team. Um, and I think it kind of shows. So they had a good season, so hopefully they'll have a really good season next year. Yeah, I think that was a good way to wrap up yeah. the year, even though the school year isn't over yet because of all those snow days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so that wraps up um, our final prod podcast for the year. Um, first and final. <laughs> yeah, first and first, yeah. Yeah, first and final. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>